Hello, this is Patrick with New Jersey's Outdoor Adventures YouTube channel. I'm here in Monmouth County, New Jersey, Freehold Township at Turkey Swamp Park. It's a beautiful county park, very quiet back here. Uh, lots of horseback riding and trails, and they have a campground. It's a very clean, quiet campground with really nice, large sites. And I met up with uh, Jeremy Puglisi from the RV Atlas. They have a really cool podcast and Facebook group with uh, about 8,500 followers. And uh, he's going to give us a tour of his Jayco Eagle HT travel trailer and tell us all about it today. Hello and welcome to New Jersey Outdoor Adventures. Hey Patrick, I'm so glad to be here with you today and I'm super excited to show you our Jayco Eagle HT 264BHOK. Okay? And this was actually a big award winner at the RVX show a couple years ago, two years ago. This won the family friendly category at RVX and this was actually the unit that was up on the stage that Jayco put together up on the stage and they put some extra equipment on it and they, they outfitted two of them that way and I actually ended up buying one of the two that they set up for RVX. So this thing's pretty decked out with a lot of extras and I'm really excited to kind of show everybody both the interior which is really gorgeous, very nice modern farmhouse interior and to show you a lot of the goodies we have up on the outside here. Should we go inside? Let's do it. So first thing, I love the, um, the Moride Solid Steps. Absolutely love these. These come with the Eagle, and you'll notice they're not on the bedroom stairs because they do fold up into the rig. And so if, if you had them over there, it would just be folding up right onto the bed. So here, um, they did put them here. We love these particularly because we have a dog. We have a dog that's getting a little bit older, so these steps are really easy for her to get up, and uh, they're super steady. So, love the Moride steps. Now, we have five of us in our traveling family, in our dog. So, it's my wife, my three kids, Max, Theo, and Wes. And we're RVers for about 10 years now, and we really like having a somewhat smaller rig. So a lot of families that have two or three kids are going to end up in a 37 or 38 foot bunkhouse. This is a 32 foot 10 inch bunkhouse. So it's a bit smaller than what a lot of people would have with my size of family. But we like to dry camp, we like to go to national parks, we like to go to state parks. So it's a bit of a smaller rig, but it packs a lot of space into this 32 feet 10 inches. So some of the things we love about it, we really like the modern farmhouse interior. Um, really beautiful, lighter colors. Uh, there's some darker wood in here as well, but Jayco about two years ago started to make it an option in most of their travel trailers, not every single one, but in most of the travel trailers you can choose between modern farmhouse, which is this kind of lighter distressed white wood, or you can do American traditional, which is brown, right? With so many RVs are brown. So I have the Furion flat screen TV, we don't watch a lot of TV when we travel, but um, if it's a rainy day, we certainly like to you know, watch a movie or a rainy night. And we really like the Furion fireplace. I think that's 35,000 BTU uh, electric fireplace. And that can heat this entire RV. So we've actually been here at Turkey Swamp when it was 27 degrees at night. And I was a little low on propane, so I just as a test decided to see how the fireplace did. I kept the bathroom door closed where Patrick is right now. And that kept us snug and warm all night. So getting one of these electric fireplaces can save you some propane. Because um, you can burn through the propane on a cold night. The one of the things I love about Jayco in general, but particularly the Jayco Eagle line, is they do not waste any space. All right, there is everywhere you look, the space is used very thoughtfully. So we have tons of cabinets here. All right, we're using this as a food pantry all kinds of storage in here, DVDs, etc., etc., And um, little thoughtful things like a permanent place for your garbage. If you have three kids, that's a big deal, right? Because a lot of RV owners are going to have a bag hanging off. It's going to kind of look ugly. So I love having a permanent place to keep the garbage. And then we have tons of drawers for our food. I've got Dutch ovens and skillets in here. Um, there's more space than we need. And there's five of us, that's saying a lot. There's actually so much space in this RV, you could overload it. You know, you could overload this thing and put too much weight in it. 
because there's so much thoughtful space in the interior. Now the kitchen sink has its own 32 and a half gallon gray tank, okay, which is a, a nice size gray tank and it's just for the kitchen sink. Then the shower and the bathroom sink have a second 32 and a half gallon gray tank. So this is a very good RV for dry camping and we do do dry camping a lot. Like right now we are not on sewer hookups. Uh, so I love having those two gray tanks. Then we've got the Furion stove here. We do most of our cooking outside, but it is nice on a rainy day to have a couple burners, to have the oven. This is just storage down here, and we do have the microwave. Uh, in the past, we've had convection ovens, but um, I kind of like having the traditional oven again as well. Over here, we chose the Chase Lounge. So you can get this with a traditional dinette, which you would see in most travel trailers. We are not big fans of dinettes. Uh, we would rather have the open Chase Lounge. Uh, we do most of our eating outside. It's kind of count counterintuitive to say you don't like a dinette in an RV, but we have these tray tables my wife got on Amazon. So we set these up here and we eat in here. But like I said, most of the time we eat outside. And this Chase is super comfortable. It pulls out into an extra bed, which we don't need to use. And then there's a table right underneath here that stores away quite easily. And it's super easy to install that table. And you put it right here and it swivels out. So it's really easy, even for a big guy like me, to get behind that table. So if we have some work to do or we gotta take the laptop out, we can turn this into a workstation. The fridge on this one's a little bit smaller than it was on our last um, toy hauler. We came from the toy hauler world, but still plenty big enough for us. And we have the outdoor fridge. We also travel with a big cooler from Cabela's filled with cold drinks and stuff like that. Um, the fridge is a uh, so we can run this fridge whenever we want, basically. The bedroom, uh, my wife really likes that we have a real door here for privacy. It's got a little lock on it. Um, there's USB outlets on both sides. A lot of travel trailers are just going to have USB outlets on one side. We both got some storage here. There's drawers up here, but I do really like and again, I said Jayco doesn't waste space. I like that we have these three drawers here for clothes as well. And this large drawer up here, which we have some games in and stuff like that. So spacious bedroom underneath the bed, we keep some teacup chairs. If we need extra seating for the kids, uh, so that the five of us can sit and watch a movie. Because out on that Chase Lounge, like basically like four of us can sit there. So if we need the extra seating, we have the extra seating. Windows are nice, curtains are nice. I love that we have the Air Excel fan, the Max Air fan, and that remote controls this fan. And this, oh, this is an awesome add-on. So this fan can both suck hot air out, it can pull cool air in, and it's covered. So it can be open when it's raining. But then what I really, the feature I really like about it, it has a ceiling fan feature. So it can be closed and then you can have the fan on and it basically operates like a fan would operate in your house. So that can keep this rig cool. So if we're dry camping at Assateague Island or something like that and we're not running the AC at night, this Max Air fan can really cool, up, cool down the whole bedroom at night. So love that feature too. Then you can see we've got that solid sliding door. My wife does care about having some privacy for the kids to change. We don't like if there's a curtain door, okay? Uh, we had our first travel trailer had a curtain door. My wife felt like she had no privacy. So the bedroom's comfortable for us. We also upgraded to a Zinus mattress, and I really recommend these mattresses. We also tell everybody if you're testing out an RV and you lie down on the mattress at an RV show and it's not comfortable, don't cross out that RV because this is a $250 mattress we replaced it with. So it's easy to get a new RV mattress. It's super comfortable. We like the Zinus brand. Let's show you guys the bathroom. For a relatively small rig, 32 foot 10 inch rig, the bathroom is huge. And initially, to be honest with you, I kind of felt like the bathroom was too big, like it was using up too much space. But now after camping four times in this unit, I love how spacious the bathroom is. Two of my kids can be in here brushing their teeth. You could have two of them brushing their teeth and somebody taking a shower. Uh, it's comfortable in here. It's a great place to change. My kids don't have a separate bunk house. Their bunks are right here. So they can come into the bathroom and change as well. 
And you'll also notice we've added the Truma AquaGo, which is a high, it's kind of like a tankless hot water system. They call it a hybrid hot water system, but it provides endless hot water. Now, this rig initially came with a six gallon water tank. There's five of us. All five of us cannot get a hot shower off a six gallon hot water tank. So adding the Truma, we have endless hot water. And it's, it's a fantastic addition. We really love the Truma AquaGo. Lots of counter space in here. Dometic toilet, place for some towels in here. This RV is over 11 feet tall. So I'm about six feet tall. I can stand in the shower, no problem. Lots of, lots of extra headroom here. Lots of space. Now, when you buy a family-centric travel trailer, a lot of the time you get a really small bathroom because you're, the space is dedicated uh, to the, the bunks. So here you have the bunks and a really large bathroom, which I think is really fantastic on this unit, for sure. Uh, out here, it's a digital control for the furnace, for the air conditioner. We ha and that's our Go Power control for the Go Power solar system. Uh, we have two 190 watt panels on the roof. There's an inverter in the front storage compartment. We can run the two 110 outlets in the bedroom. And we also have a generator out front. So you want to stay tuned because we got all kinds of goodies outside as well. Uh, and I do want to say this, we have one air conditioner here, a ducted air conditioner, and it's prepped for a second air conditioner. And people often ask me and say, well, why didn't you get the second air conditioner? We went with that max air vent fan, a 32 foot, 10 inch rig, does not need two air conditioners, in my opinion. And they're often, the second air conditioner is often very loud. It sounds like a helicopter in the bedroom. So I'm very happy that we skipped the second AC and that we got the max air vent fan, for sure. Now the bunk area, we kind of did something unique here. It's two double over double bunks. This bunk we added on the floor. And some people say, oh, you put one of your kids on the floor. Yeah, they're kids, it's camping. One of them's perfectly comfortable on the floor and it made this rig work for us because otherwise it's kind of a rig for a family of four. So we have one of my kids on each of these bunks, but I would also say if you only had two kids, uh, and I love the lighting throughout this unit is fantastic. We have dimmers. The, um, if you don't use that third bunk on the floor, uh, your dog might love it down there. All right, so a lot of times people use love that because their dog sleeps down there. And then this flips up very easily. And there's a rear storage compartment door, which we'll show you outside. So you can put SUPs here. You could put kayaks here. It's almost like we call it a baby toy hauler. So very flexible unit, really good for a family that likes to kind of get outside and have some adventures outside. So we are so, we're just so happy in this RV. You know, we were taking a little bit of a risk getting such a small RV with three kids, but we're super, super comfortable in this rig. So all kinds of goodies on the outdoor too. Um, I'll give you a couple more things to show you in here. It's a little bit messy, but we're really camping here. Um, I love that there's like this little coat room here, right? We put some sneakers in here. You can put raincoats in here. And also you, you can start and stop the generator, which we're going to show you outside. I have a Cummins Onan generator, which means I can power everything in this rig from that, from that LP generator, which I'll show you outside. And then we have the Lippard uh, auto leveling system, which is controlled from in here. Uh, you can do some of it from outside, but then also when you want to auto level, you come in here. Control panel is up here. So you'll notice that there's two gray tanks, as I mentioned before. Uh, there's a 40 gallon fresh water tank. We have four AGM batteries to go with those two 190 watt solar panels. So it's a really great combo to have that go power solar system and the Cummins own and generator. We can camp anywhere we want and have power, have air conditioning, et cetera, et cetera. You can check your gray tank, your black tank, all those things. I need to dump the black tank. You can see that's getting kind of full. You can check your fresh water, etc., etc. But I'm running, I'm working off the water here at the campground. So lots of little touches in this unit. Um, also, Jayco's kind of famous for their little blue lights, their little night lights too. I want to make sure I show you those. And they're kind of throughout the rig. So for my kids, you know, I have a seven-year-old. We leave that on as a night light. And there's small blue lights like that throughout the rig and in the outdoor kitchen, et cetera, et cetera. So there's a lot of really small, thoughtful design features in this RV. And I really feel like the, um, the product development at, uh, team at Jayco just nailed it on the 264BHOK. Okay. We'd be thrilled to throw you, show, show you some of the goodies on the outside as well.
Let's go after and take a look. Jayco calls this the industry's best outdoor kitchen. And I agree. So you got the blue light again, and then there's a full light. This came with a two burner stove, which I had removed and I ordered an extra drawer because I always cook with my Weber grill, my Blackstone griddle, I didn't feel a need for that. So these are great deep storage drawers. They're a bit of a mess, but I got a lot of my grilling stuff in here. I got flashlights in here. I got the propane quick connect here. Uh, so lots of space for storage. I have four outlets here. If I wanted to, I could put a television here. There's an auxiliary jack there for cable hookup. There's a separate gray tank. There is a third gray tank dedicated to this sink. So when you add your three gray tanks up here, you've got almost 80 gallons of storage for, for gray water. We have the Furion speaker that we added. This is better than the house speakers that came with the rig. You pop it in here and it charges. It's also a flashlight. We have a second Furion speaker inside and you can pair them and listen to the music together. This sink drains right into that extra gray tank. Got a small little fridge here. And this is really strong, sturdy material, super easy to clean. And I love that there, there's two propane quick connects. So if you cook with a Weber grill or a Blackstone griddle, you've got a propane quick connect there and you've got one right here off the back. So with the proper adapter, I can set up my Weber grill right here and kind of create a whole outdoor kitchen space that I love so much. If you come back here, the hitch is rated for 300 pounds. So we added this Yakima bike rack, which I love. It's a four bike rack, but I can only get three bikes on. So uh, doesn't, I can't get four on there no matter how hard I try. So we put three bikes here. I put two in the back of my pickup truck. Then you're also gonna see this uh, rear cargo door. So if I wanna take my SUPs camping, they're gonna slide right in. We had a toy hauler. We loved a lot of things about the toy hauler. So I like still having this door. Also, I have the Furion backup camera set up which is a really nice feature too. So let's go back around this way and we'll show you some of the real treasures on this unit. I'm, I'm very proud of the Cummins own and generator up front. There's a few other goodies too. Goodyear tires. So all Jayco's are gonna come with Goodyear tires. Okay, American made tires. They're rugged tires. They hold their pressure really well. They drive really well. You know, if you're an RV person, you know that a lot of the Chinese tires are problematic. We call them China bombs. This is my third rig in a row with the Goodyear Endurance tires, and they are great tires. It looks like they're 16 inch. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And it is amazing. They really hold their pressure well. I feel like cheaper tires fluctuate quite a lot more. Furion 12 volt television, 12 volt. Okay. So you don't need to be plugged in at a campground to use this. It can run off the house batteries. This is a, an extra. If you don't order it with the TV or don't have a TV put in here, this storage goes straight up. So it's a great place for fishing poles or say your camp chairs, your bagged camp chairs can fit in here really nicely. And just back to that point, Jayco does not waste space on an RV. So every bit, little bit of space is used. The two solar, we got the 19 foot awning. I love a really big awning. I, I do not, personally, I don't like a rig that has a slide out on the door side and a short awning. I love the fact that I have a 19 foot awning. I have kids with bicycles at night. If it's raining, I'm gonna put all the bikes under there. And then up there, you can kind of see your 290 watt solar panels from Go Power up there. Another thing I love about the Jayco Eagle line right now is that you can, it's a, the solar panels are a clickable option. So if you order your RV from the manufacturer, you can press the button and add that solar package onto it. It comes with the 190 watt solar panel, but you can ask for an additional one. It's off the books, but you can order it with the second one. The front storage bin is worth taking a look at. And again, back to the Jayco blue lights. Okay, there's lights, you can't see it so well now, but there's the blue light on each staircase. So you can see what you're doing at night. Uh, we also added the RV snap pads. I installed those myself recently. That's a permanent um, pad to go on your auto leveling jack so that you're not coming to the campground, having to put them under there, get them all straightened out. That stays on there permanently. That's a really cool new company. This is called, the product designer calls this a flat floored fifth wheel. Uh, technically it's called a drop frame chassis, right? So the chassis drops down here 
to give you this cavernous storage. If you can get a good look at this storage, this is an exceptionally large front storage bin for a travel trailer. It looks more like the storage bin on a fifth wheel. Uh, again, I almost worry you could put too much weight up here because then you're adding, uh, you're adding to the hitch weight. But I like it because we cook outside. I've got all my cooking equipment in there on this side. Two of the AGM batteries are back there. And then two of the AGM batteries from Go Power are on either side. And again, we're a little bit dirty because thank God we've been camping. Okay, after a really rough spring, um, we're, we've been out camping about 10 days in a row. So this is the Cummins Onan QG5500 LP generator. And it runs off these two 30 pound propane tanks. I love the fact this is a propane generator uh, and that they have 60 pounds of propane here. So when we go out to Assateague Island, if I want to run the air conditioning in the daytime, I can put on the common zone. And it's a bit loud, um, most generators are, and you're not going to be able to run it at night once generator hours end, but I can power the entire rig off the grid from the common zone. And so I'm super, super happy with that. Let me show you around the back one or two more things. Might need to open this. It's the other side of the storage bin, but it's also got sort of a docking station slash control panel, which this is, this is a, considered a luxury travel trailer, a Jayco Eagle. You're not going to see this on an entry level travel trailer. So here I can do my winterization. Okay. So I can pump the antifreeze right into the system from here. I have a black tank flush right here. I have this hose to rinse off kayaks or take a shower outside. I love the little touches, the diagram. So if I'm dry camping and I want to run off my fresh water, that shows me how to use these color-coded switches. Uh, if I'm you know, running off city water, uh, it also shows me exactly how to do it. So it, ma it makes winterization quite a bit easier too. And Jayco is going to give you, there is a light here. So if I, like I winterized at 10 o'clock at night last time because it got cold. The little touches like the lights make a big difference. And then possibly one more thing to show you. Big slide out, which creates all that interior space. We're running off uh, 20 amp here. It's, it's 50 amp power cord. The 50 amp power cord largely is there because they assume a lot of people add a second air conditioner. Uh, 50 amp power cord is big and bulky. I kind of miss the old 30 amp power cord days, but we have the 50 amp cord. And then this is the Truma Aquago. So the Truma Aqua goes back here. And I can't rave about this thing enough. Um, endless hot water provided by this system. Super easy to winterize this system as well. It's really, really, really worth it. So that's my Jayco Eagle HT 264BH. Okay, did I do okay, Patrick? You did an excellent job. And this is our book, See You at the Campground. Just came out in March. You can get this at Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Walmart. It's going to be for sale at Target stores across the country. Books a million. Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's. So pick up a copy. It's a great introduction to everything you need to know about camping. Now you're pretty invested in the RV lifestyle and pretty yeah. active as well. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about your background and what, what you guys do? So 10 years ago we had twin boys and we just were dying to get out of the house and we really had never RV'd before. So we saw a Go RVing commercial and just got the crazy idea to buy a pop-up camper. And that really changed our lives, you know, like the, the hotels were not working for us and we wanted to get out and have road trips. So we went on that very traditional trajectory. We bought a pop-up camper, then we went to a travel trailer, then we went to a larger travel trailer, then a toy hauler. Now we're in a, a more luxurious travel trailer, maybe end up in a motorhome one day, but we're not full timers. We um, have a sticks and bricks house, but we probably take the RV out about 50 to 80 nights a year, depending on the year. So we're gone most of the summer and we do a lot of weekends in the spring and the fall. And uh, I, I love the towable life. You know, I'd like a motorhome one day, but I love being able to detach the truck. I got my F-250 right there and take off and head into town and explore, so. Can you, can you tell us a little bit about your, uh, your website and yeah. your Facebook group? So the website's thervatlas.com and we have almost 10 years worth of material, general interest, anything you're interested in about RVing. And we've done our podcast, The RV Atlas, for five or six years now. It's been downloaded over three million times. It comes out twice a week. It's a general interest show about all aspects of RVing. 
And also we write for Trailer Life Magazine. We review RVs for them. We do uh, television and PR for Go RVing. Uh, so we're, we're pretty entrenched. My wife and I actually both work full time in the RV space right now. So check us out online. Every, we're at the RV Atlas everywhere. Instagram, Facebook, the Facebook group, et cetera, et cetera. And then um, people want to know MSRP price point of something like this. Now I know now the 2020s are out. Maybe the 2021s are coming out. I actually looked. So the 2020 MSRP on this is going to creep up to $49,000. Now, you know, if you've been shopping for RVs, MSRP is one thing and the price you pay is, is often a very, very different thing. But this is a, a luxury travel trailer. It is not a lightweight travel trailer. This thing is built like a tank. It's built to last. And it's gonna, a lot of the things I showed you are gonna come included. But then also, you know, you can, you can add thousands of dollars worth of extra equipment on this too. Well, what about the weights and measures of this? Do you weights have any? and measures. 32 feet, 10 inches, which I really like for national parks. The dry weight is 8999. Okay, so basically 9,000 pounds dry, and my truck can tow over 12,000 pounds, so I'm really comfortably able to, to tow this. Um, and it's over 11 feet tall, it's like 11 feet 2 inches, so it is kind of as tall as a smaller toy hauler to some degree. A typical, light, like a lightweight travel trailer is going to be significantly shorter. Uh, because it's also taller too, it does certainly affect the MPG. So when I'm towing, I'm getting 8 miles per gallon. You know, and that, that has something to do with the height and the weight of this unit. This is not built to be a lightweight unit. And then there's a lot of folks that are shopping for RVs and they might consider something like this. Do you recommend a certain type of tow vehicle that would be so, necessary for something like this? This is an Eagle HT. HT means half ton. I feel more comfortable in an F-250 towing this. You would have to really get a properly equipped half ton that's, uh, that, can, that can handle this guy because this one's getting pretty heavy. Uh, so I always recommend over tow. You know, if you start to look at the numbers and you're like, man, it's kind of close, is this gonna work? I tell people, you know, look for a bigger truck. Yeah, I, I wanna, I don't even remember all the numbers so specifically anymore because I know that I'm so far past all of them that we're really in the safe zone. I noticed that uh, the hitch area, there was, uh, looks like some brackets. I guess you're using some type of equalizer we or sway control? Use the equalizer system. I have used the equalizer system for our last three RVs. Um, White Horse RV is our dealer and that's what they recommend. That's what they, I've never used anything but the equalizer system, but that combines weight distribution and sway control in one product. And it is a seven or $800 product, but you don't get sway. And I, my last RV was a Jayco Octane toy hauler. Toy haulers are particularly prone to sway because they are wider. This is 96 inches wide. A typical toy hauler is 102 inches wide. So toy haulers are super prone to sway. I never had sway with the equalizer system. So I really recommend that as well. And I was reading online like the reason why some of the toy haulers are prone to sway because people overload the back and they lessen yeah. the tongue weight, which is gonna cause it. Oh, so you gotta be totally. mindful of that. And even in a, a unit like this, I mean, you need, to be, you need to be packing the weight evenly. You need to think about where your slide outs are, where your kitchen is. Generator, batteries. Generator, all those things. We try to pack it really, really evenly. Um, and if you do, it's a very safe towing experience. And we've been all over the country with our last toy hauler and with this one. We drove uh, across the plains of South Dakota and didn't have sway with that equalizer system. And this is the truck right here. This is a Super Duty F-250 gas, 6.2 liter. Um, people say, why didn't you get a diesel? Well, diesel's $10,000 more. So it was a financial consideration. If, if they cost the same amount of money, I probably would have gone with a diesel. But um, this tows this RV really nicely really safely though i would say again my mpg is eight miles per gallon and that, i'm not getting incredible mpg and for financial uh this you know was a brand new rv there's rv loans available out there between 10 and 20 years depending on the amount of finance so you know you could spread those payments out really far and, and make it for affordable for anybody you could you could we do tell people you know put some skin in the game though you want a healthy down payment um if you do decide to sell an rv after two years you could be underwater okay because you're just paying off the interest initially so we have tried as much as possible to put a 40 or 50 percent down payment uh obviously not everybody can do that i'm a big believer in getting an rv loan i mean i'm making memories with my kids right now uh if i waited till i had the cash for this you know i, I wouldn't i wouldn't get it ever probably um, but I don't like those 20-year loans too much either. You know, keep, keep it reasonable, keep it within your budget. We tell people that your RV payment 
should look like your cable bill and not your mortgage. And that's a principle we've stuck by over the years. And one more follow-up question uh, before we wrap this up. Uh, you're very active on your Facebook group and you answer a lot of comments. Is there any like one comment you get over and over that a lot of people ask uh, about that are shopping for an RV or just bought one? People get very confused by matching a truck to a trailer. And I've been doing this for 10 years and I still have to really sit down and look at numbers. And the primary tip I give a new owner or a new shopper is that the new shopper often just looks at the tow capacity of the truck and the weight of the trailer. They don't look at the hitch weight uh, and the payload capacity. So you have to look at that second number. Right, so you're gonna have a dry hitch weight number and when you hitch up, it's gonna be pressing down against the truck. On this, it's 1,013 pounds. So that's gonna deduct from your vehicle payload and payload would be what your vehicle could handle weight. It's got a curb weight, a GVWR, and in between that is your payload for your passengers, your luggage, mm -hmm. and the hitch tongue weight. So you gotta be mindful of the yeah, payload. Like I said, our tongue, we weigh over a thousand pounds up front, and then there's five of us and a dog and gear. So I need a lot of payload capacity, and personally, that's why I'm not in a half ton pickup truck. So don't just look at those first numbers, okay? You also have to look at the dry hitch weight and the payload capacity. The other thing that we also tell people is that when you go to an RV show, they often put the UVW weight on a sticker. And that's the weight of the RV that, as it's unloaded. And we tell people the only time you're ever gonna tow it unloaded is when you tow it home. And every time after that, you're gonna be towing it with gear in it. So we tell people you want a truck that can tow the GVWR, the gross vehicle weight rating. Um, that, that's the weight of the RV and the allowable cargo that can go in it. So I always want a truck that can that clears the GVWR. Don't pay too much attention to UVWs because you're never going to tow it that way. I get that question asked every day. And I always say, you know, at least match it, if not exceed it. Match it or exceed it's a really good rule of thumb because some people say, oh, well, I'm never going to load it all the way. And what safety experts in the RV industry tell us is that most RV owners do overload their RVs and they do fill it up uh, with the maximum allowable cargo, which is the CCC, the cargo carrying capacity. So all of this can get confusing ask for help, double and triple check your numbers. That's really, really super important so you can tow safely. Well, Jeremy, thank you very much for taking the time to give our audience a tour of your Jayco and, and give a lot of really good tips. We have a lot of viewers on our channel that are just researching RVs right now. Uh, whether they're going to build one, buy a used one, or they're going to shop for a brand new one. And there's just so much information out there. It gets a little confusing for them. I know your your book is key. We, I read that book. I have a copy on my desk at work. It really answers a lot of those questions. So for any new RV owner, I'd definitely consider picking up that book. And uh, definitely check out the RVAtlas.com and the Facebook group I would join. Uh, 8,500 subscribers right now, followers. I'm sure that's going to get up to 10,000 uh, before the summer's over. And uh, this is Patrick with New Jersey's Outdoor Adventures YouTube channel. Hope you enjoyed this video. Please like this video, comment, share, subscribe. I'd love it. And we'll see you soon. Thanks, Patrick.